Okay. Thank you. Some of them no longer exist. Everywhere I went, I looked for the art, the unbelievable. I've met women with necks 15 inches long, the man with a horn growing from the top of his head. But I've uncovered wonderful works of art created from the most unlikely materials. Many of these are on display in this show. So please come in, have a look around, and then ask yourselves if you believe it or not. Things are here. The reason you are here is one man, Robert L. Lurie. He spent almost half a century collecting the most unusual things in the world and living the most remarkable and fascinating life. Ripley was a cartoonist, explorer, reporter, adventurer, and collector. The modern Marco Polo, visiting over 200 countries before the existence of jumbo jets, finding the most bizarre people, places, and things long before YouTube and the internet. In Ripley's search for unbelievable stories to showcase, in his immensely popular Believe It or Not newspaper cartoon feature, he acquired hundreds of exotic artifacts from around the world. He opened numerous auditoriums, world's fairs, to display his collection, including expeditions in Chicago in 1933 and New York City in 1939. Rip, as he was known, was born in Santa Rosa, California and worked for four years in San Francisco before moving to New York City. The first Believe It or Not cartoon appeared in the New York City Globe and commercial advertisers on December 18, 1918. At its peak, the cartoon was read by over 80 million people a day in over 360 newspapers in 42 countries and in 17 languages. in order to get the sand even all over the head. As the sand cooled off, it was reheated and placed back in the head, which was scraped each time with a knife to remove the burnt tissue. Gradually, as the head shrunk, the Javaro worked the features with his hands, pinching and molding the face so that it kept its natural appearance and its freshness. The head was charred over an open fire to preserve the skin. The mouth pegs were removed and replaced with long strings and earrings made of exotic bird feathers. Worn like a necklace, the completed Sansa was now a source of pride to the owner for as long as he lived, and would typically be buried with him when he died. Believe it or not. seen creatures like these. That's because most two-headed animals are still born. Now these one-of-a-kind animals came from one particular farm, run by a farmer with a heart of gold. He made it his mission to seek out these discarded genetic mutations, to care for them, and extend their fragile lives. Paul Springer keeps a photo album with pictures of nearly all of them. First, it's a uh, robot called Bolivar. I wear her long 
September 7th, 2010, Whitley's Believe It or Not brought Kajendra Thapa Maynard, the world's smallest man, to New York City in the Big Apple to promote their latest book, Enter If You Dare. Hailing from Pakara, Nepal, Kajendra is 18 years old. Stunted by a pituitary gland disorder, he is fully grown and only 22 inches tall, and he weighs just 10 pounds. Aside from his physical size, however, Kajendra is your typical teenager. He likes dancing and practicing karate. He also has a fondness for blonde women and a certain other lovely lady. Yoti Amji of Nagpur, India, who, at 16 years old, 23 and a half inches tall, and 11 and a half pounds, is the world's smallest woman. And she seems to have captured both his eye and his heart. In New York, Kajendra delighted guests at the Ripley's Auditorium, posing with his picture in the book and coming eye to eye with Robert Wadlow, the tallest man who ever lived. Thank you. 